how excellent a salaf I am for you. It's a narration which is found in Sahih Muslim. Where, where he means it, how excellent a predecessor I am for you. So, the meaning here is that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a model, an example uh, uh, of guidance to be followed. And this is the same idea and the same understanding that we are given from the book and the sunnah with respect to the Sahaba and the Tabi'een and the Tabi Tabi'een, meaning how excellent a model of guidance are they for us. Why? Because the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah, uh, as well as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an and the Sunnah have indicated in many texts that the Sahaba are the best of people and that the, that the, 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 the knowledge is, is transmitted by way of them and that they are the more, most firm upon the, 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 the deen and the affairs of Aqeedah and the affairs of Manhaj and the knowledge and the action and so on and so forth. So when the people who came after them in the later generations which is the likes of al thawri and al awzai and in the time of the Tabi, Tabi'een and, and after them they are the ones who began to use this phrase and they are the ones who began to say that we ought to follow the way of the Salaf and we ought to remain upon the way of the Salaf. So when you look in the book of Aqeedah which was compiled in the, in, in, in the year 200, 200 Hijrah afterwards 224, Kitab al-Iman and, uh, and so on and so forth and all the various books of, books of the Salaf through the 3rd century, the 4th century, the 5th century you find within these books references to the obligation of following the way of the Salaf. Okay, so this itself proves that Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah, was not someone who invented this call and who devised this call of saying that we have to, that, that, that we, we uh, should be Salafi and we should follow the way of the Salaf and you know, he never, he never invented this call and this is a clear proof and a clear indication of, of the falsehood of this claim. Likewise, some, more, some other people they go further back and they say that Salafiyya really was something that Muhammad bin Abdul Waha, uh, that the Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymi rahimahullah, that he is the founder of Salafiyya. These are some other people. And generally these are the Kuffar. The Kuffar, they, they uh, claim that ibn Taymi rahimahullah is the founder of modern day Salafiyya. And the reasons for this are numerous. Uh, the reasons for this are numerous. And I'll explain to you three false Salafi movements that the Kuffar think to be Salafi but they are not Salafi and because of three, these three false Salafi movements which emerged in the last century who came in the name of Salafiyya then you find many people amongst the Kuffar as well as the Muslims they think that the true Salafis or that the true Salafi Da'wah which was the Da'wah of Sheikh Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab and Ibn Taymiyyah that they think it's a false they think it's a false call so the first of these false Salafi movements was a movement that was begun by three individuals at the turn of the last century. The first of them is a person called Jamaluddin al Afghani. The second of them is called Muhammad Abdu, and the third of them is called Muhammad Rashid Rida. These three names. As for the first, Jamaluddin al Afghani, then in reality he's not al Afghani. He is, as Sheikh Muqbil called him, al muta Afghan. He's someone who's pretending to be Afghani. Rather, he's a Rafidi who came from Iran. He came from Iran and he traveled to the various Muslim lands and he suspected that he was even uh, an apostate. Someone who left his, who left belief in Islam. So he came to Egypt and this man basically, he was someone who in the name of, uh, basically there were two main ideas in his head. Number one, that we've got to unite the whole of the Muslim Ummah and bring it all together and compete with the Kuffar in the advancements that they've made. So he looked at Europe and he saw that they made advancements in industry and technology and science and how the Muslims are backward. So he wanted to compete with them. So therefore he wanted to bring this sort of modernism this, this, this modernism and bringing Islam back into the 20th century as he saw it. However, he conceived this in the name of Salafiyya. That in order to do this, we have to go back to the pious generations. And we have to remove the superstitions and the traditions that we hold on to. It's a very deceptive call. And following him in this was Muhammad Abdur, again who was a modernist. And following him in this was Rashid Rida. All of them 
under the name of referring back to the early generations and purifying the da'wah and, and, and so on and so forth, they portrayed their da'wah as if it was Salafiyyah. And this is false, this is not Salafiyyah. And Shaykh Muqmin rahimahullah, he has a book in the citation of Muhammad Rashid Rida on the subject of magic because these people, these modernists, they uh, employ their aql in denying many of the affairs of the sunnah. However, the important thing is that to the kuffar, many of the kuffar, they think that these three individuals are the founders of Salafiyyah. And then some ignorant Muslims following the kuffar, they think that the Salafis today, the true Salafis, that their roots lie in these three men. And this is bad, this is not correct at all. Which is why you find many of the people today, like the Sufis, and from the people of, of, of uh, you know, the people of the Ashairah and the Mu'atajila who are linked with the Sawwaf, you find that they are the ones who often bring this claim that the Salafis today, they have their roots in uh, uh, these three men. Likewise, amongst the Kuffar, this is also from the Kuffar, they, play, they think that Hassan al-Banna, he called the Salafiyyah. Why? Because Hassan al-Banna, in his works, he would be very, very, he would use very, very general speech. Why? Because he wanted to accommodate everybody. So he, so he would say, for example, our da'wah is Salafi in belief. And it's political in, uh, in, its, uh, in its da'wah. And it's modernist, or it's, it's, sorry, it's, it's contemporary, meaning that we deal with issues of today. Just have certain slogans that we would often repeat. It, it, it's a Salafi aqidah, it's modern in approach, it, it, it's political in its da'wah. And by way of this speech, he wants to accommodate everybody. So the one who's Salafi in aqidah, he'll think, oh yes, he'll accommodate me. And the one who's a modernist, he'll think, yes, he'll come, I, I can work with this group. And the one who's, you know, so he tries to bring in everybody. So when the Qafar, or when many of the ignorant Muslims, they saw that this man, he's claiming, or he's making an ascription to the way of the Salaf, they thought that this man, or this man's da'wah, is a, a Salafi da'wah. And again, this is a false Salafi da'wah, it's not true. And the Kuffar think that this man was the man who called the Salafiyyah. Which is something that we need to explain and refute so the Kuffar don't have these misconceptions. And as for the third false Salafi movement, then this false Salafi movement emerged from Afghanistan during this jihad in, in, in the 1980s, when what happened was that uh, the, 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 the majority of those who went to fight were recruited from North Africa, from Egypt, Algeria and other places, and there were people of Takfir. They were the remnants of the Jama'at of Takfir, Jama'at al-Jihad, uh, al-Takfir wal-Hijra, Jama'at, uh, Jama'at Islamiyah. All these were splinter groups from Ikhwan al-Muslimin, and they emerged in the 19th, end of the 50s and the 60s due to the writings of Sayyid Qutb, these groups. And in the late 70s they were recruited to go and fight the Jihad in Afghanistan. At the same time, many of the people from the Gulf countries, from Saudi Arabia, from Kuwait, from the, the, the Emirates and those surrounding areas, who broadly speaking are upon the, broadly speaking were upon the Aqidah of the Salaf, and the Manhaj of the Salaf. And they went to Afghanistan, and they participated in this fighting because the scholars ruled at that time, it was a legitimate jihad, so they went there. So what happened was an exchange, a mutual exchange of ideas. On the one hand, the North African Taqfiris and the Khawarij, who were Ashaira, Mu'tazila, Mufawwida, they mingled with the, 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 the people who were brought upon the Salafi Aqidah in the Gulf, and they acquired the correct Aqidah. So they left the Ashariya and the Mu'tazila and the various other deviations that they had. Why? Because they came from a background and an environment in which this this, this Aqeedah was the Aqeedah of the Mu'tazila and the Ashairah and the Aqlani and so on and so forth. So when they adopted this Aqeedah they thought, now we are Salafi. Now we are Salafi, Alhamdulillah, we've become gravitated to the way of the Salaf. And some of these people they would even identify themselves with the Salafi scholars, like Ibn Baz and Ibn Uthaymeen and, and, and Al-Albani and so on and so forth. However, they remained upon the manhaj of the Khawarij and the manhaj of the Taqeedah that they were upon. But they thought they were Salafi. And likewise, on the other hand, the people who went from the Gulf and they went to Afghanistan, then they retained the Salafi Aqidah, but they acquired the manhaj of the Khawarij and the manhaj of Taqfir and the manhaj of assassinations and political uh, rebellions and revolutions, and they thought that they, they still remained Salafi. So this, this mutual exchange of ideas created a new generation of people who thought that they were upon the Salafi Da'wah, 
But they were not upon nothing but the Aqeelah of the Khawarij. And 